Very rare it is indeed, this day and time, that ones who have become firmly trapped in the vanity game of the adversary, are able to recognize their folly, and thus seek to release this false unworthiness and limitation brought about by the superficial preoccupation of physical image. You must accept self regardless of physical form. If you recognize that you wear too much weight upon your frame and it is not healthy, for you, then you must decide to change of it and then do it. Until then, need you love yourself, God within, less, because you look or don't look a certain way? No. Commune with your spirit within and find out why you consume more than you are able to use. Learn to understand why you do something and then you can work for positive adjustment within. Your physical health represents your inner health. Disease of the body is the physical manifestation of what began as disease in the mind. Clean up your thoughts and your body will be healthy and vibrant as well, it is really so simple, but most of you miss it. You need not miss it anymore now, right? We would also like to speak a bit about what is termed cosmetic surgery, butchery. Your own statistics show that many women feel less feminine or less attractive, if they have small breasts. Why does this happen? Because the images of bigger breasts and voluptuous women are thrust before them beginning, when they are children in nearly all of the controlled media. These young girls slash women feel, if they had bigger breasts that somehow they will be more acceptable to men and thus also be envied by women. You ones often, on the one hand, do not wish to be considered sex objects, yet you desire to fit what you are taught, programmed, is the sexually physically attractive female figure. Don't you see, beloved ones, you allow doctors to cut upon your bodies and cause you pain and suffering, and often later complications, just to fit an acceptable, to you, physical image. Again mankind, adversary, has corrupted the purity of the woman's breasts by making them into hideous sexual objects of lustful desire. The beautiful grace of the feminine body which was created in beautiful perfection of God has been cut into pieces, breasts, vagina, mouth, neck, legs, buttocks etc. of physical lustful desire. Do you know why the breasts were given unto a woman? Not as sexual objects, but for the suckling and nurturing of her babe, a new creature of God. Remember this, women, the next time you think to make yourself bigger breasts. You dishonor God within by despising your given physical form, and wishing to cut it up to make it into some image of what is appealing. To who? Why need you allow imposed images of perfection thrust down your throat? The answer, precious ones, is you must not allow others' opinions and images to make you feel self and worthy. Here is a test, for you, women. Upon awakening in the morning next, go to your full-length vanity mirror and look upon yourself naked. What do you see? Can you look within the vanity mirror without your makeup and hairdo, your girdles and padded brassieres and fine garments and see God? If not, then recognize and understand your transgression, commune with God within, forgive self and do not look again into the mirror, until you do see and know the love and beauty of God reflected back. And the same goes, for you ones who are of male form of human. You experience vanity somewhat differently than women, but most of you still suffer feelings of inferior unworthiness when you gaze upon your nude body and face. We have seen you. God has listened to you. The dialogue within goes something like this, if only I was taller, had bigger shoulders, a larger penis, hair upon my chest and or face, had a flatter stomach, a thinner frame, more muscles, more hair, blue eyes, brown eyes, whiter teeth, tan skin, light skin, and, and, I would be accepted. Then the dialogue goes something like this, if only I had more money, a new car, a better job position, and, and, I would be accepted. Do you recognize anyone here, you of the male species? Do you see, precious ones, you set yourselves up, by believing the lie of images, to always fail in some way or another. Accept yourself within, honor your physical body which has been loaned to you. For this is the wondrous, beautiful vehicle, given of the Father for your spirit within of God to experience the wonders of creative spiritual unfoldment upon third dimension physical illusion. Now, within your Western civilization, nearly every little girl and boy wants to look like someone else they have seen in a movie, on the street or in an advertisement. They are taught, through the program media and advertising, not to accept themselves as a beautiful individual reflection of God, because their physical features, they are told, do not measure up to the ideal presented of what is acceptable beauty. 
it is no wonder that the cosmetic and related industries make billions of dollars off of you once, because they, the anti-god create the image and feed the vanity which is the result of one's feeling they never quite measure up and will thus seek to improve what is now their perceptions of physical imperfection. Even many of the ones your society defines, as beautiful, while they are young are most often cast aside, when they begin to show signs of aging. And those who depend only upon their looks, while they are young, will find themselves frightened of aging and will thus become empty inside and bitter because of the rejection by the very ones who molded and accepted them, while they were physically young in appearance. What can you do, parents, to help positively guide your child toward the path of inner beauty and spiritual freedom and away from societal imposed limitations of acceptance? You must encourage the child first to understand his slash her oneness with all. God slash and other humans, the planet, the mineral, plant and animal kingdoms, other planets, all of life and all of creation. Teach the child about God and his love for all of his fragments of self. Teach the child about the natural laws of balance given forth to maintain order upon creation and within creation. Teach the child about the nature of God's gift of free will and the personal responsibility each one has to honor God within and to serve only his will, because he is our just and wise spiritual creator slash ruler and kin of wisdom. Teach them about the adversary, and how it has fooled many of God's children. Teach the child that what they may perceive as separation, is only illusion of separation and that many other ones they will meet, will not understand this truth, because they are spiritually ignorant and duped by the adversary of Godness and so then not yet spiritually aware. Teach the child to honor and be tolerant of all other human fragments, as fragments of the oneself of God and the creation. And yet teach the child that he slash she must also recognize and not tolerate the behavior, ignorant, prejudiced opinions, misperceptions, and actions, which blatantly break the laws of balance of God and creation. So, teach the child he must defend self within honor of God's laws, if one of these ignorant slash spiritually weak ones wishes to cause harm, in thought, word or deed, to him or another. Teach the child about his power to co-create with God, and why he must monitor his thoughts, words and deeds in order to recognize his transgressions, so that he can create a godly world in service to God's will. Then you must teach the child to always see, develop and honor the spiritual and loving beauty within self and all others, which is the birthright of all of God's children. Teach the child the truth that spiritual oneness, beauty, power, wisdom and love within can never age or die or be taken away from anyone, because the spirit is what is real, it is the spirit of life that exists within all of the creation in the continual unfolding blossom of joy and love. And so, you beloved parents of God, must also then live in accordance to the laws and will of God which you have taught the child, to set God slash Adam's example of balance and truth which the child will surely follow. So, when you have done your duty for God slash Adam, as parent and have given, to the best of your understanding and awareness, the child the love and discipline of God's will and the laws of balance and you yourself, to, have set the example by your actions and behavior, then you must release the child to God, that he may choose with his own free will his experiences and learn about his personal responsibility in the manifestation of life. Is it wrong to want to look your best? Not at all. You must simply and honestly understand what truly motivates you. To be neat and clean in your dress and appearance gives honor to self and to God as long as you don't secretly despise and are not ashamed of your appearance and seek to alter it or hide its reflection of beauty. If you are acceptable and give honor to self, as you are in physical form, whether it be male, female, black, white, tall, petite, red hair or gray hair, you will be acceptable and give honor to God slash and all others. They are individual reflections of God slash Adam as well, whatever their limited human prejudices and opinions are matters not at all to you. Remember, in the big picture you are not your physical body, you are God's fragment occupying physical manifested form of your choosing to allow experience upon this wondrous creation. All are beauteous creatures of God slash Adam, each is different. Isn't that wonderful? God, too, enjoys variety of his creatures within the creation. Why think you there be so many types of life forms on just your tiny planet? Do you not enjoy the varieties and uniqueness of all the creatures and creations within this creation such as of each type of flower, each color of the rainbow, each season of climate, each insect, each animal and each human being? 
are we saying it is wrong to wear your makeup and have your stylish hair days and wear upon your body's fine and beauteous garments? Not at all. You simply must recognize why you do these things. If you love who and what you are within and without in your nakedness, then enjoy playing your games of makeup and dress up, because you enjoy it, it is fun, you can afford to and it gives you happiness to do so, not, because you despise your body and countenance for its perceived imperfections. Or, because you wish to impress others as to the finery of your jewels and garments, that somehow you are finer too. For example, you once have designer everything now such as cars, furniture, appliances, clothing, cosmetics. Well, some designers have generated more prestige and admiration than others. Do you know many simply copy other designs? And many of your more celebrated and prestigious designers use the creative designs of their apprentices? Yes, and they place their own name upon the garment. A bit of stealing, we would say. What is the point? If it is a garment, enjoy the beauty fine quality and fit of the garment, because you enjoy the garment, not, because you want the prestige and snobbery, not to mention vanity, of the designer label to be noticed by and somehow make you better than or socially accepted by others. Do you see the difference we are pointing out dear ones? You blindly run about seeking approval from any but yourselves. We simply want you to recognize your folly in the things you do and desire and correct of it, for you and for God slash an outer father within you. Free yourselves from the bondage of vanity and you will be one large step closer to reaching God's kingdom. Are we saying it is wrong to return color to the gray hair upon your heads, and to otherwise cosmetically hide from view what you consider signs of aging? Not necessarily wrong, just simply fact that you create, but are unable to accept certain changes of body deterioration and most all of you ones are horrified of aging or being old in your physical form. Why? Because, you've been taught again by the adversary that somehow you are less a human being and less attractive, when you are old and you will be rejected, and often are, as unable to contribute to humanity. Do you know, dear Keelas, that it is that very fear, planted by Satan, in your minds which starts the clock of aging ticking within your very beings? You once, by believing you will live only up to 100 years or so, begin your own aging process within you, when you are small children. And because of the now created, by the adversary through you once, harshness, pollution and poisons upon your plane you really have no desire within to stay longer, so your body starts its deterioration process. Why are some more vibrant and healthy than others throughout their lifetime? The ones who are vibrant and healthy are in love with life and honor their spirit of life within. Their bodies simply age, because they, too, perceive limit of lifespan from early indoctrination, only they age perhaps with more dignity and grace because of the degree of spiritual purity of joy and love which they have recognized and cultivated within themselves and have given graciously to others. Do you know, that you could create a body which would live for a nearly endless number of years in your counting, if you but knew it inside your mind to be true? Our brothers of physical form upon Pleiades live more than some 1,000 years in your counting in their physical form. At one time in your ancient civilizations of Atlantis and Mu, Lemuria, your ancestors also lived to be over 1,000 years of age in your counting. Remember, your immortal soul never ages, Gilas. Most physical manifested bodies, though, eventually deteriorate, not always because of fear, but often, because one simply tire and become bored with having the same form, so they create deterioration of the form and move on to new realms and forms within creation. In the higher realms of God's kingdom, your form becomes high concentration of cellular light and you can change it at will, since it is one with your spirit within.